In this video, we're going to take a look at the final GraphQL lab on Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called Performing CSRF Exploits Over GraphQL. Before we started these GraphQL labs, we made an introductory video covering the background information, like what GraphQL is and how to work with it in Burp Suite. So if you haven't seen that, I would encourage you to go back and check it out. If not, let's just take a look at the background information that is specific to today's lab. Cross-site request forgery vulnerabilities enable an attacker to induce users to perform actions they do not intend to perform. This can be done by creating a malicious website that forges a cross-domain request to a vulnerable application. GraphQL can be used as a vector for CSRF attacks, whereby an attacker creates an exploit that causes a victim's browser to send a malicious query as the victim user. CSRF vulnerabilities can arise when a GraphQL endpoint does not validate the content type of the request sent to it and no CSRF tokens are implemented. Post requests that use a content type of application slash JSON are secure against forgery as long as the content type is validated. In this case, an attacker wouldn't be able to make the victim's browser send the request even if the victim were to visit the malicious website. However, alternative methods such as GET or any request that has a content type of form URL encoded can be sent by a browser and so may leave users vulnerable to the attack if the endpoint accepts these requests. Where this is the case, attackers may be able to craft exploits to send malicious requests to the API. Finally, there's a note which says that the steps to construct a CSRF attack for GraphQL-based vulnerabilities are the same as regular CSRF vulnerabilities. And if we visit that page, it will just talk through the general steps that we need in order to create a CSRF proof of concept. With the background stuff out of the way, let's take a look at the lab. The description says, the user management functions in this lab are powered by a GraphQL endpoint. The endpoint accepts requests with a content type of form URL encoded and is therefore vulnerable to cross-site request forgery attacks. To solve the lab, craft some HTML that uses a CSRF attack to change the viewer's email address and then upload it to your exploit server. We can log into our own account as usual with the credentials Wiener and Peter. So that's it, let's open up the lab. We'll start by going through the basic functionality of the website. So let's view one of these posts. First of all, see, can we leave any comments? We cannot. So we'll view our account. We'll log in with our credentials, Wiener and Peter. And we also have the option to change the email, which is our target goal as well, to change the email using CSRF. So let's update it so that we've got it in our burp history. And let's go and take a look at it. You can see we've got this post to the GraphQL endpoint, GraphQL slash v1. And we can use the GraphQL tab then to get a better formatting. I also see a JavaScript file here as well, which we can actually view then to have a look at how the mutation is working. If you want to get a better formatting for that, you can just open up F12 and we'll go to our debugger and try and find this JS. So we've got a get blog summary or blog summary GraphQL and a GraphQL util. But if we go back to the login page, oh, here we go, change email. And here's the form that's being sent off. Well, anyway, let's just follow our standard process. So I'm going to take one of these GraphQL requests. I'm going to send it to the repeater. And then I'm going to enable the set introspection query. And we'll send that off. We'll get back our results. And let's go and visualize them. So we can paste in the results here and then just remove the HTTP headers. And then we'll get the schema. But it's not really of interest to us in this case. We want to change the email and there's nothing here showing for us. So let's go back. Let's also just right click this and save it to the sitemap so that we can go in here and have a look at the various queries. One of them is the change email. So I'm going to send that to the repeater. Now, one thing here is we need to change the content type. So it's currently application slash JSON, and this is in JSON format. So we can right click in the repeater, and then we can change the request method. That changes it to a get request. And then if we change it back again, it changes it to post, but with the www form URL encoded. The problem is now we need to get our values in here. I've actually lost the GraphQL query. Let me send that to the repeater again and go to GraphQL because we want to basically take a copy of this and we'll go back to the other tab and we're going to say in here query is equal to we can paste this in then we also need the variables as well so 
Let's go back. Oh, there, there is no variables to this one. Let me try and find the example that did have. It must be this one. Let me send it to the repeater. Here we go. Okay, so this was the input. And I'll take a copy of that as well. Try and find the tab that we're looking for. This one. Okay, and the variables are equal to. And then hopefully we can just paste this in. And then we need to make sure this is URL encoded. So I'm just going to highlight it and do Control and U. And let's see, I also want to change the email to make sure it's something new. Send, but we got an error. Okay. Let me actually undo this and I'm going to try and do all characters. So let's try and convert URL and then encode all characters. We'll click send, but we still got the error and it's over the and symbol. Okay. What about if I URL encode this bit? and then URL encode the second bit, cannot invoke because something is null. Can we refresh the page? It didn't, well, it said that the email was a at a.com. I think I might have undone that. Okay, Control Z again. Yeah, okay, we'll change this to b at b.com. Let's do URL encode all characters send now it says b.com let's refresh the page it's now b.com awesome so that works now we want to generate the csrf let's change this to c at a.com let's do that again convert url encode all characters now let's right click this let's go to engagement tools generate csrf proof of concept and this generates this we have some options here we can change as well but hopefully this will work by default what I'm going to do is select test in browser and there we go. We can take a copy of this. We'll go to the browser and let's see if this changes our email to C at a.com. And it looks like it has, let's go back to the homepage, my account, and it has been updated. Okay. So we've verified it. Now we want to go and do the same exploit against the remote server here. That did take a long time for it to actually load. I don't know why, but every time I do a right click and show in browser or request in browser or like this test in browser, it takes like a minute for it to even do anything. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Somebody can let me know, I'm sure. But anyway, let us change this. We want to change now the email. It's currently c at a.com. I'm going to change it to d at a.com. And there we go. We'll take a copy of this. We'll go to our exploit server. We'll paste it in. And let's try and just deliver it to the victim. There we go. We have solved the lab. Since this is the final lab in the GraphQL section, let us have a look at how we can prevent GraphQL attacks. If your API is not intended for use by the general public, you should disable introspection on it. This makes it harder for an attacker to gain information about how the API works and reduces the risk of unwanted information disclosure. For information on how to disable introspection on the Apollo GraphQL platform, you can have a look at that blog post. And if the API is intended for use by the general public, you'll likely need to leave introspection enabled. However, you should review the API schema to make sure it doesn't expose unintended fields to the public. You should also make sure that suggestions are disabled, which will prevent attackers from being able to use clairvoyance or similar tools to glean information about the underlying schema. You can't disable suggestions directly in Apollo, but there is a GitHub thread for a workaround. And make sure that your API schema does not expose any private user fields, such as email addresses or user IDs. As we saw in one of the labs, it's sometimes possible to bypass standard rate limiting using GraphQL APIs. With this in mind, there are design steps you can take to defend your API against brute force attacks. This generally involves restricting the complexity of queries accepted by the API and reducing the opportunity for attackers to execute denial of service attacks. To defend against brute force attacks, you can limit the query depth of your API's queries, and the query depth refers to the number of levels of nesting within a query. Heavily nested queries can have significant performance implications and potentially provide the opportunity for denial of service attacks if they're accepted. By limiting the query depth your API accepts, you can reduce the chance of this happening. You can configure operation limits, which will enable you to limit the number of maximum unique fields, aliases, and root fields that your API can accept. Configure the maximum amount of bytes a query can contain, and consider implementing cost analysis on your API. Cost analysis is a process whereby a library application identifies the resource costs associated with running queries as they are received. 
if a query would be too computationally complex to run, the API drops it. This has been the performing CSRF exploits over GraphQL Lab from Portswigger, and it also wraps up the GraphQL topic now. So we're going to move on to a new one next week. You can let us know in the comments what you think that might be or what topics you're particularly interested to see. And as usual, let me encourage you to sign up to the Integrity platform if you want to try and find some GraphQL vulnerabilities and get paid for it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.